this one doesn't take too long, so we're just we're just gonna do it. Um, okay, so the general form of a circle with center H K. The general equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. So this problem is actually rather quick because we are given h and k right away. So the formula is x minus negative 5 is plus 5 squared plus y minus negative 1 so it's y plus 1 squared the only problem is finding out the origin or sorry the radius from the origin so negative 5 comma negative 1 is the center negative 5 negative 1 here's the center of our circle and it passes through the origin right there. So get out your rulers. What's that radius? This is this is an important question. How do you find the distance between any two points in a plane? to use the distance formula? That, that's exactly what you have to use, yep. And what is that? It's something that you might remember from geometry class. Um, it's the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. That's right. So we've got a triangle here. So we just need to figure out how tall this triangle is and how wide this triangle is. How wide is it? It's five units. It's zero minus negative five. So we're going to square that. Plus, well, how tall is this triangle? Well, it's one unit tall. Right, it, this, this point is one unit down, so we're taking zero minus negative one. So that's what the, the student offered up there. We take the difference of the x coordinates, and that's the width. We take the difference of the y coordinates, and that's the height. We square those values and add them together. And the reason we do that is because that is the Pythagorean theorem that tells you the hypotenuse square, which in our case is the radius squared. So I, I didn't catch who was saying that, but you are right on. Um, but you actually don't need to take the square root in this case, because if you take the square root, that gives you the radius, right? Which is still fine. But what do we need in this problem? We need the radius squared. So don't take the square root. Save yourself one step. It's 26. It's 25 plus 1. That's the square of the radius. Yes, yeah, so the Pythagorean theorem tells you exactly what to put there. Don't take square roots of it. You're good. Okay, uh, next problem, unless you've got a question on this. Wait, so the equation is the x plus 5 squared plus y plus y plus 1 squared equals 26. Right, so <clears throat> the distance between any two points. So point 1, point 2 is the square root of, and now I'm going to use the coordinates, okay? So x1 minus x2 squared. So that's the x coordinate of point 1 
minus the x coordinate of point 2. Is that clear? Okay, yeah. plus y1, so the y coordinate of point 1, minus y2 squared. This tells you the distance between any two points in the plane. That's the straight line distance. No curves, no, no bends, just the straight line distance. If you were to take a ruler and measure that distance, this is what you would be approximating. Okay? And this comes straight out of the Pythagorean theorem because we're looking at the width of this triangle squared plus the height of this triangle squared. That's what this is. And then you square root that. Okay. Next question. We're doing pretty good. We're, we've got 10 minutes left. We've done quite a few questions. All right. Um, this one is just another distance formula, a formula question. So which of the points 4, 4 or 5, 3 is closer to the point negative 1, negative 3? So how would you do this one? You would use the distance formula for the distance between A and C and B and C and choose the smaller of the two. Right, like that. That's exactly what you do. So what we just saw in the previous one using that distance formula, you take four minus negative one squared add that to 4 minus negative 3 squared. Then take 5 minus negative 1, square it. Take 3 minus negative 3, square it. Figure out which of those two things is, is bigger. Right? The sum, the first sum of squares or the second sum of squares. Uh, and then you choose the smaller. But did I say choose the smaller? The small, why do I do that? It's probably because I'm typing as I'm talking and I'm talking faster than I'm typing. Okay, choose the smaller of the two. Because the, the, the one that has that smaller sum of squares is, is closer. Okay, questions on that? I don't want to actually write it out because it takes too much time. Okay. Okay, here, this, this is a good one. But do we need to do it? So... If I gave you a graph of a function like this, could you tell me function values? Could you find net change, domains, uh, where is it increasing or decreasing? What are the local maximum values? Is it one to one? Can you do these questions? Yes, you can do them. Or yes, we should do this. Sorry. I, I, so can we do these? Yes or no? <laughs> OK. Okay, so we'll, we'll skip it then. What if I just gave you a function? Can you find domains of things like these? I don't see anybody saying yes, I can, so. I'm going to go ahead and start on. I need a little, yeah, okay. Oh, let's do the second one. Good, okay. Yeah, the first one's a little bit easier than the first. The first one, you're going to start by suspecting I can plug in any real number, but then you're going to take away some numbers, and the numbers you're going to take out are the numbers which cause division by zero. The number that does that is one half. So you're going to take out one half. Right, so this is the domain of the first one. That took less than a minute, so there we go. For the second one, what could cause issues? We start with all real numbers and suppose, hey, we can plug in anything. And then we start looking for problems. We know that there are problems when we take square roots of negatives. So we know we're going to have to take stuff out. 
So we need to consider this. We need 4 minus x to be positive or 0. And we need x squared minus 1 to be positive or 0. Both these things must be true. Because if one of them is negative, then we can't do this. We can't evaluate the function. So we're going to solve both of these, and then we're going to take intersections of the, of the created sets that we get. OK, so the first one is, is rather easy. If 4 minus x is non-negative, then 4 is bigger than or equal to x. OK, so on a number line, I'll graph over here. We're, we're seeing that here's 4. We, we see that x has to be over here. And it could equal 4. So that's the first inequality. How about the second one? Well, what we, we need is that x squared is bigger than or equal to 1. The only numbers that, when you square them, are bigger than 1 is numbers that are bigger than 1. In absolute value. So what we see here is the absolute value of x must be bigger than or equal to 1. Right, if I took negative 2 and squared it, what do I get? I get 4 positive, and that's bigger than 1. If I take any negative number that's like smaller than negative 1, I'm going to get something bigger than positive 1. So what does that mean? Well, that means x is less than negative 1, or x is bigger than positive 1. But we could also have equality there. Okay, now that's like the quick intuition method of solving that. That's like your gut feeling. So here's negative 1. Here's 1. The second inequality set says we can have anything over here. So there's some overlap there, right? And it says we can have anything over here. And there's a little bit of overlap there. The method in which we were taught in this class to, te to solve something like this is not what I just did. What, what we did is we would factor this. Right? And then we'd look at the intervals here here and here. It's like this interval, that interval, that interval. And then we look at the signs of this function in each interval by making that big table. And we, we would find that it'd be positive here and positive here, but negative in the middle. But this method saves us a little bit of time, so I'm trying to show you another thing and do that. So what is our domain? Well, it turns out we've got positive numbers under radicals whenever we pick a number in the overlapping sections. So they overlap here from negative 1 down, and they overlap from 1 to 4. So that's our domain. Otherwise, what we're doing is we're taking out from the reals negative 1 to 1 and we're taking out 4 to infinity. We can't plug in anything up here, or we get a negative number um, here. We can't plug in anything in here, or we get a negative number underneath this radical. So we can only plug things in elsewhere. So as a graph, it's the red line there. Um, as an interval, it's the domain is negative infinity to negative 1 together with 1 to 4. Uh, as set builder notation, it's all numbers between 1 and 4, including them.
and then any number less than or equal to negative 1. Questions? So is it the overlap that will be plugged in or the gap? Right, so the domain is the allowed numbers. The domain is the <clears throat> allowed numbers. And so the red highlighted portion is the set of numbers which gives positive numbers under the radicals, right? The red, and I'll, I'll highlight it even more so, this red region down here, including negative 1, and this one here, including 1 and 4, any number in there gives us positive numbers underneath these radical signs which means that we can take those square roots. So we're able to do that. Which means those are the domain intervals. Yep. Yeah, part of my explanation earlier was that these other ones give us negatives. So this here gives us a negative under the second radical. And this section over here gives us a negative underneath this radical. So we would have to take the square root of a negative number, and we can't do that. So those are not in the domain. OK. That is our time. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to stop the recording here.